The Murrumbidgee River is a major river in New South Wales and its name comes from the Aboriginal Wiradjuri word meaning never failing water or big water. In 1829 to 1830, explorer Captain Charles Sturt and his party trekked along the banks of the Murrumbidgee River from an area near Burrenjuk to a location near what is now known as Hay. From there they rode and sailed down the river until they found where it met the Murray River near Balranald. Soon after, land was released along the river and large sheep grazing stations were created. At the same time as Burrenjuk Dam was being built, work was progressing on the Berenbed Weir and Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area. After countless hours of surveying hundreds of kilometres of land and years of hard manual labour with horses and steam engines, the MIA was officially opened on the 13th of July 1912 by the New South Wales Minister for Public Works, the Honourable Arthur Griffith, after whom the city of Griffith is named. Land was initially released in small irrigation plots attracting settlers from Broken Hill, Sydney, California and a substantial number of Italian migrants who brought with them the traditions of market gardening, grape growing and wine making. In 1915, the state and federal government set aside land and funds in the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area for the Soldier Settler Scheme. Over 2,200 returned servicemen from World War I took up the offer and settled in Griffith and Leeton, with a number becoming successful irrigation farmers. More farms were also released after World War II. More than 40 years after Burrenjuk Dam began supplying water for irrigation, Blaring Dam on the Tumut River was constructed. Today both Burrenjuk and Blaring Dams release water to the irrigation districts. They have a combined storage capacity of 2,660,000 megalitres, which is five times the volume of Sydney Harbour. Once the water is released from the storage dams, it flows down the Murrumbidgee River past the town of Gundigai and through the city of Wagga Wagga, taking a number of days to arrive at Berenbed and Gajildri Weirs. From these two points, the water that is needed for irrigation is fed into supply channels and onto farms to grow crops or for stock and domestic use. Today, the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area has more than 3,300 farms covering a 660,000 hectare area and relies mostly upon the water supplied from the scheme. The Colliambly Irrigation District is home to more than 470 farms covering a 350,000 hectare area. Water is also supplied to 80 farms around Hay and to the properties along the length of the river. The Murrumbidgee River is also the source of a secure domestic water supply for towns across the region. Hello, I'm Robert Black, Chairman of Collie Ambu Irrigation. I would like to thank our forebears who had the foresight to build and construct Barranjuk Dam. Without their vision, Collie Ambu and the success of the Riverina would not be achieved. In conjunction with Blowering Dam, Barranjuk Dam has provided Colliambly Irrigation Area with a reliable source of water. Colliambly Irrigation has efficiently provided water to our farmers to produce many thousands of tonnes of rice, corn, wheat, barley, potatoes, wine grapes, prunes and citrus, along with cattle, sheep and fat lambs. Barranjuk Dam has played a huge role in the growth of irrigated agriculture. It has been the backbone of development in the Murrumbidgee and Colliambly irrigation areas, which are situated within the food bowl of the Riverina. Hi, I'm Frank Batistel, Chairman of Riverina Citrus. Thanks to the Burrenjuk Dam, the Riverina Citrus industry was established in the Murrumbidgee irrigation area. It has grown to become the largest citrus growing region in Australia. Since the dam opening, over 10 million tonnes of citrus has been produced in this area. This supports 500 farms, 45 packing houses, five processing plants and thousands of casual and permanent employees. It has a current annual turnover of $300 million. 
All this thanks to Burrunjuk Dam and associated storages. The water it stores transfers dry, dusty plains into lush green paddocks and is the lifeblood of a range of cropping and livestock farms as well as the huge manufacturing and tertiary industry sectors and the communities as a whole. During times of drought, that water becomes even more valuable for growing food for the nation and other countries around the world. Hi, I'm Dick Thompson. Chairman of uh, Murrumbidgee Irrigation. It's very timely to be talking about the commencement of the Burrunjuk Dam a hundred years ago. Uh, it really highlights how positive our forefathers were in overcoming the problems of drought in this area and how building Burrunjuk Dam has allowed places like Griffith and Leeton to exist. They would not be here at all except for Burrunjuk. The MIA would not be the productive area it is, producing large amounts of food to feed millions of people around the world. Murrumbidgee Irrigation supplies water to an area covering 660,000 hectares. Uh, we supply enough water to irrigate approximately 120,000 of these each year, returning approximately 2.5 billion to the Australian economy each year. The Riverina supplies 30% of Australia's citrus, produces more wine grapes than any other region in the country and is home to the rice industry. Irrigated pastures supply food for dairy and beef cattle, as well as sheep used for meat and wool production. The region is a major contributor to the nation's export industry, with rice, fruit, vegetables, nuts and locally produced wine shipped to countries across the globe. I'm Jerry Lawson, Chairman of Sunrise, and we're delighted that Burrunjuk is celebrating its centenary. Burrunjuk has had a profound influence on the development of rice in Australia. The Riverina is home to the most efficient medium-grained rice growers on the globe. Rice truly is the most important food crop in the world, and Sunrise feeds 40 million people every day. The irrigation scheme supports a population of more than 50,000 people and farm income is estimated at $500 million with processing worth another $800 million. Rural centres such as Griffith and Leeton have depended on its water supply for almost a century and have seen their populations grow as farming opportunities have expanded. Thanks to the foresight of the designers and engineers of the early 1900s, Burrunjuk Dam was fitted with two hydroelectric turbines for the generation of clean, green energy. Today, the electricity is transferred to homes and businesses around Australia via the national grid. Hi, I'm Robert Rigg from Transgrid. Burrunjuk Dam is not only a reliable source of water supply, it is also a reliable source of hydroelectric power. Hydroelectricity is electricity produced from flowing or falling water. Located at the base of the Burrunjuk Dam on the Murrumbidgee River near Yass is the Burrunjuk Hydro Power Station, which is operated by Araring Energy. The Burrunjuk Hydro Power Station commenced operation in 1927 with two 5 megawatt units in the number one downstream station. The number two station at the dam wall, also with two 5 megawatt units, was completed in 1938. Unfortunately, the number one station was decommissioned in 1974 when it was severely damaged by floods. The site was overhauled in 2002 with number two station upgraded to two 6 megawatt units and a new power station, number three, installed with a 16 megawatt hydro turbine installed. The current capacity of Burrunjuk Hydro Power Station is 28 megawatts 
This load is connected into the main grid for Eastern Australia via the Transgrid network at 132,000 volts. Today, State Water maintains, manages and operates Burrinjuk Dam, but the amount of water made available for irrigation each year is determined by the New South Wales Department of Water and Energy. Its biggest challenge is meeting human and environmental needs in a drier climate, whilst balancing the needs of food production to ensure a long future for both the river system and irrigation communities. Without the foresight of our forefathers in building Burrinjuk and other dams, the Murrumbidgee River would actually have stopped running in the last few years and the production of food in this area that supplied Sydney, Melbourne and other areas in Australia during the drought would not have occurred. 